It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hey there, I'm Eric Keller. And I'm Andrew Schauer. And welcome to the second video in our series on insect vision. Last time, we took a look at a carpenter ant. It has an apposition or photopic eye which is the basic compound eye that works great for daylight. Call it the entry-level compound eye. But now we'll look at something a little more complicated, an eye on a nocturnal insect. Fireflies fly around at night and look for sequences of flashes to find potential mates. So it's really important for them to have sensitive eyes if they want to get any firefly love. From the outside, a firefly's eye looks similar to an ant's eye. There are several hundred facets on it, each representing the end of one omatidium. But on the inside, they're very different. If you'll remember, in our ant's apposition eye, each omatidium is isolated from its neighbors by pigment cells. Light can't spill over between the columns. But fireflies have what's known as a superposition eye. Also known as a scotopic eye. And these eyes have a special adaptation to be more sensitive in lower light. There's a wide, optically clear space between the lenses and the photoreceptors called the clear zone. To see how that changes things, let's simulate some light. Light first enters through the corneal cone. Side note, for this firefly, the lens and the cone are kind of the same thing. Some superposition eyes do have distinct lenses. It just happens that this species of firefly does not. Biology, man. After the light passes through the corneal cone, it enters this clear zone. These are still pigment cells in the clear zone, but they're more watery and transparent, and the pigment itself is all bunched up at the top near the cone. It means that light can shine through the cells and hit the neighboring omatidia. This may sound like a formula for blurry vision, but in fact, the lenses refract light in just the right way, so each photoreceptor gets focused light from multiple lenses. It's like the neighboring omatidia are all chipping in to provide more light. Finally, below this clear zone is a dense layer of rhabdomeres, the same kind of light-sensitive cells that we saw in the ant's eye. These turn the light into electrical signals that are sent off to the brain. But there's more to this superposition eye. After all, many adult fireflies come out at dusk when it's still pretty bright outside, and then stay active into the night as it gets much darker. How do they cope with the changing light levels? We mentioned the cells in the clear zone did in fact have some pigment gathered up at the top. Well, when it's bright, this pigment creeps down the cell and blocks some of the light. It's like the firefly can drop the curtains of these pigment cells and get a more focused vision. Then at night when it's darker, it can lift them out of the way for more light sensitivity. So those are the big anatomical differences between the two kinds of compound eyes. But some insects, especially those that can fly, also have another totally different kind of eye and we'll look at that in the next episode.